Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. In this week, we're going to take a look at the mail service that's built into Yosemite Server. Now, mail is one of those uh, services that has a lot of technical components to it and can cause a lot of uh, issues one way or the other. And so if you're a home user, just to start off, one of the things I usually tell home users is not to hassle with hosting your own mail. Uh, there are a lot of issues that can go into that in terms of whether the mail gets through or not. When your server's down, your mail's down. Uh, there are issues with spam, uh, all kinds of things that make uh, e email re um, administration a little bit difficult. So that's why I usually tell home users not to do it. And in fact, for myself, I don't host my own uh, mail service on my server just for that reason. I, I don't need the hassle. Now, having said that, I know for many of you, you're still going to jump in anyway. And so in doing that, I still want to walk through this tutorial to help you get that set up. Uh, a couple of things to consider, though, when you're looking at mail, especially if you're a home user, and that is, uh, the first thing is, is port 25 blocked or not? Uh, many ISPs will block port 25, and that's the email port, which means that you won't be able to run your own email server. So you really need to find that out first to make sure that you can make it work. Uh, the second thing is, is do you have a static IP address or not? So do you have an IP address that doesn't change? Now, I know with a lot of dynamic IP addresses, they usually don't change that often. But when you're relying on email, uh, if your IP address does change, you don't get any email until you update all of your DNS uh, to be pointing to that new IP address that you just got assigned. So it's probably not a good idea to host a mail server, uh, especially one that you rely on, uh, if you don't have a static IP address. And so again, that's something you'll want to contact your ISP on. The other thing you have to think about is how is your DNS set up? Now, for those of you that are home users, you probably have what's called a split DNS, and that is that your server is handling everything inside your local network, and then you probably have a domain registrar on the outside uh, that's handling all of your DNS in the outside world. And so your name servers usually will still live with your uh, domain provider, uh, where, whereas um, if you don't have that, if you're not uh, using a split DNS and you host your own web server maybe on a co-location um, facility, uh, like Mac Stadium or something like that, uh, then you have a front-facing server and you handle all the primary DNS, which means that your name servers will actually be on your, you will be your own name server, uh, so to speak. And those are your NS1 and NS2 records. So you want to know, uh, you know, kind of how your DNS is set up. And like I said, if you're a home user, you've got a split DNS uh, setup. Uh, which again can cause uh, you know just just a few other issues because uh, you'll probably have to get your um, some of your records like maybe your PTR records and things like that set up through your um, ISP and so again just a few things that you need to consider so you know how to do that so what I'm going to do in this screencast is show you how to set it up is if you're running a split DNS where you're a home user uh, if you want to see how uh, DNS works for a hosted server uh, you can see uh, the screencast that I've done for Max Stadium uh, on how to set that up uh, for a mountain lion server, but it's it's very similar in terms of the setup. And so I'll put a uh, a link here on the screen. Okay, now before we actually set up the uh, server settings here in the server uh, application, uh, first we want to make sure that our outside settings are set up properly with our domain provider. Uh, so let me just uh, pull up a, a website here, and uh, let me just show you a couple of things. Um, first of all, this is uh, over on a domain registrar. This is Hover, and so I'm in their uh, DNS section here on their website. Depending on who you've hosted your domain with, this is going to look a little bit different, but I wanted to show you what records you would want to set up on your domain provider. Uh, so you want to go into the DNS section, uh, whatever that is on your provider, and you want to click the Add New button. And we're going to add uh, two records here. And so we're going to do that for mail um, dot whatever your a registered domain name is. And so in this case, I, you know, it might be, you know, mail.example.com, okay, or something like that. Or if you've got it set up where you've got, uh, you know, the split DNS, and so your domain provider is handling, uh, you know, uh, example.com, you might want to do uh, mail.server.example.com if that's how you have your DNS set up. So whichever of those works uh, for you. And you want to make that an A record, and then you would put in your IP address here, which is your public IP address, and you would save that, and that would create an A record. So that's the first record you want to set up. Uh, the second record we want to uh, set up is for an MX record. 
And so once I put that in there, uh, you notice I've got priority and then host name. And so I'd put a priority in here of 10 because uh, that's the highest priority. And I'll show you what that looks like on the server as well. And then for your host name here, uh, then you would put your server's host name in there. And it would basically then uh, set up your MX record. So actually the host name here would be your mail uh, host name, mail dot server.example.com or mail.example.com, whatever you set up for the A record previously, that's what you would put in here. And then you would save that, and then that would give you your two DNS uh, records. Uh, if you want to kind of know what that looks like, I've got another website here where he kind of just shows what these uh, records would look like. You can see here he's got his mail.hisdomain.com pointing to his IP address. And then he's also got an MX uh, record pointing to this exact same mail record that he set up here. Uh, with a priority again of 10, 10 being the highest priority, one being the lowest. And that's how he set it up. So it's just a kind of another look at it from another domain uh, provider. Uh, so you get an idea of kind of how that should be set up. Uh, so let me just put this down here. Okay, once you've got the outside set up, uh, again in, in a split uh, DNS situation here. Uh, now let's go through and take a look at the different settings we have here in Mail and Yosemite Server. Now, like I've said, in every one of the other services, you've got your access areas up here uh, where the status is offline. You can set permissions for this just like any of the services. Again, all users or only some. And you can also choose the networks, all private or only some networks. Uh, I'm just going to leave it open here for our purposes. Uh, then you go through the authentication process here in the settings. That's the first setting there, set to automatic. Uh, you can edit that and you can actually choose um, the authentication you want to use. Uh, I would either use automatic or if you wanted to set it to open directory, you could do that as well. Um, and you can see here how it's kind of showing the ways that Open Directory will configure. If you wanted to do custom, then all these fields open up and you can change them to whatever you want. Uh, in most cases, automatic should be fine. Uh, but like I said, if you wanted to do Open Directory, you could do that as well. I'm just going to cancel and leave that alone. Uh, here we've got push notifications. They're enabled uh, because we set up the push notifications in uh, another screencast. Uh, the beauty is, is once you've set those services up, uh, push notifications will automatically show up on all of your services. And again, this is set up by adding your Apple ID, and they give you a certificate from Apple to make push notifications work. So that's how that's set up. Then we have filtering here, and this is uh, how you want to filter your email. And this is probably one of the more important things that you want to set up with mail because you want to make sure that you're keeping viruses out uh, of your email system as well as uh, filter for junk mail so that your email box just doesn't get filled up with a bunch of spam. Now you can actually control uh, the level of filtering that happens with your mail server. If you come over here under Edit, uh, you get this nice drop down that gives you a number of different uh, options. Uh, the first is you can enable virus filtering and I would uh, always leave that on because I think that's a very important thing you want to make sure you're filtering for viruses. Uh, another option is you can enable blacklist filtering and what this is is it basically uses the zen.spamhost.org site uh, which has a server with uh, up-to-date list of servers that are known to send junk mail. And so what this service would do is filter out this junk mail before it even gets to you uh, because it, it keeps a running list of known spamming servers. And so that might be a really good one uh, to enable there. Uh, if you had another um, you know, blacklist server that you want to put in there, you could add that in there as well. And uh, that would work the same way. But this is just a good way to get started. Now you've also got enable gray list filtering and uh, basically a gray list uh, basically temporarily rejects mail from unknown senders and then after a delay a legitimate sender would then try to send it again. So a lot of email clients will send it one time and if it doesn't get through it'll say hey I'm going to try it again in X number of minutes and then it will send it again. And so this gray list filtering allows your server to do that just to test to make sure it's not a spammer. Now this can create some issues uh, with sending and receiving so I usually don't enable that so I'm glad it's off by default. In previous versions of server it was on by default and confused a lot of people because they were trying to figure out why their server wasn't receiving email and that was because of the delay. So uh, I would just uh, leave that unenabled but it's there if you want it. Uh, you also have enabled junk mail uh, filtering and, and this is what you want to do because again it's going to filter out different uh, levels of spam. And so you can go from uh, aggressive uh, which marks more mail as junk to cautious which filters less of the junk mail. 
And so I tend to like it right at the default at 6. Uh, that's probably a good setting right there, but you can again adjust it to whatever you think needs to happen. And some of that will be trial and error uh, once you start sending and receiving email. So once you're done with all this setup, you just say OK, and then it will add that. You notice now it's added the word blacklist to my uh, list here uh, because I added that to it as well. So it gives you a nice uh, setting there to show you what's on there. Now, the other thing that you can do is you can relay outgoing mail through your ISP. Some ISPs, if you're running a home server, require you to relay your outgoing email through them. And so if you have that situation, you would check this, and then you'd get a drop-down, and you would put in whatever SMTP address that they give you uh, in there so that they would tell you what to relay it through. And then you would have a username and a password that you would put in if they want you to have authentication with it. So you can add that in there as well. I'm just going to cancel that because we don't have that situation in this case. Uh, then down here you can limit your email to a certain size per user just by checking this. You can put in whatever you want in there, 200 or more, and that way it'll keep your server from getting too full and uh, just be able to limit that. But I'm going to just take that off because I don't need that right now. Now finally this domain section is new down below. It used to be up, up top here uh, in the previous version that just said provide email for what domain. Uh, in this case what we're going to do is just click a plus there. We're going to add our domain here which like I said it would be whatever you put either server.example.com or example.com. Uh, in my case I'm just going to put server.toddoltoff.com and then I would add that uh, in there and you can see that it's added this here. I can put in the members then uh, of this domain uh, that will receive uh, email. And so uh, right now it says no email addresses. Now I can either add email addresses in here myself or I can add them through my users and it will show up there whichever way I want to do that. Uh, when I say create then it's going to actually create uh, that domain there and you see no email addresses right now because I haven't created any for my users uh, but I could put them in there and just actually manage all of my email addresses right inside the mail service which makes it a little bit more convenient than having to dig into each user and put in those email addresses myself. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of how that's set up. Now before we actually throw the service live there are a couple of uh, DNS entries that we need to add. So let me just come over here to DNS what we're going to want to do with DNS is we're going to want to add two things. We want to add an A record for that mail.example.com uh, that we set up on our domain provider, and we're going to want to add an MX record. So we would add a machine record here if we wanted to, and this would be for mail. And you can see there it's mail.server.toddletoff.com. And then I would put the IP address uh, in here of my server and hit create, and then that would set up that A record. I'm just going to cancel that for a minute. And then I would also want to set up a mail exchanger record where you can see here's the zone, right? Server.toddoltoff.com. And then I would just put in what I put before, which would be the one I created, mail.server.toddoltoff.com. And you can see it just kind of adds it on the top. And then I would put a priority 10 here, just like we put on our uh, domain provider, and add that record. And then I would be all set with the records I would need to make the mail service work. Again, since I'm not running the service, I'm just going to cancel it instead of throwing the switch and causing confusion there. Uh, but that sets that up for me. Let me just go back now to mail. So once you're done with that, you've got your email addresses set up. And again, you can go in and edit this anytime you want. And so if you wanted to add an email address, let's just add one in there just for fun. I'm going to put in my name. And you see how it brings up my name there? And so it gives me an email address uh, server and all that kind of stuff. I can say OK. And so now it says I've got one email address. So you can go in and edit that anytime you want. So then I have that all done. I throw the switch. And once it's live, it'll tell me that everything's ready to go in the status. I'll get a green light on the side. And then my mail service is live. Now, like I said, I don't run mail myself. So I'm not going to set it up because it might it's just going to cause some issues uh, for me to set that up since my domain provider already provides my email. Uh, I don't want to cause any conflicts. Uh, but that way, hopefully, it gives you an idea of how to set that up if you want to do that. Like I said, I usually don't recommend it for home users. But uh, if you're daring and want to try that out, uh, now you know how to set it up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.